Today I'm going to take you through using JetFluids with the Arnold renderer. JetFluids can output a number of different formats or different uh, mesh and model types. It can export mesh, particles, thinking particles, as well as OpenVDB. And Arnold has some specific options for rendering these. So I'm just going to take you through those now very quickly. So on the plugins 4D menu, I'm going to go to JetFluids, New Test Scene. I'm going to leave this as it is, and this is a level set solver, and under display tab it's set to mesh, so this will create a mesh when it's simulated. So I'm going to click start caching. I'm just going to allow timeline scrubbing. That's going to produce a mesh in, uh, generated as part of the level set solver. So I'm just going to stop this. So the mesh is this level set solver. It's a generator, and is the output. It's going to show that. Currently it's set to internal, so all the caching is internally in one file, but if you wanted to output it up to different files, you can um, make that external and have an external file as well. But we're going to focus on internal at the moment. Now to render this, uh, this is like the most simplest thing. You just uh, render this as you would any kind of normal object. So just to, to show that, I'm going to create a Lambert, put the Lambert on the level set solver, and uh, hide the sphere, open up the IPR window, And I need to add a Arnold Sky to it. And let's just zoom in a bit. And now you can see the mesh being rendered there. Now this is the trial version of Arnold, which so you can see the watermark over the top there. So that's the simplest thing, creating a mesh. So now I'm just going to close down the IPR render. Now it's useful to point out that you shouldn't do renderings in the IPR while you're simulating using the JetFluid system because they're both very CPU intensive and it can uh, run into some issues. So just close down the IPR and you'll be fine. So right now, first I'm going to delete this level set solver because I'm going to try a different solver. Clicking on scene, I'm going to use flip. Now flip can output particles, um, a mesh, which is actually a polygon mesh, but it's just using the points of the mesh. So it's very similar to particles and volume. I'm going to show you the particles first. So let's just put the flip solver selected, go to the cache tab, click start caching, and I'm going to allow timeline scrubbing as well. This allows me to do this while it's kind of simulating. We'll just click stop. That's enough. Now what it's showing here in the viewport is it's showing fake particles. Now these are not rendered at all. These are just something to show in the UI so you can get a visualization of what these particles look like. And they're just being um, shaded based on this uh, gradient here. So they will not be rendered. If you want to render them, you can um, pass this into something that, like MoGraph, or we can actually use uh, the thinking particles. So under here you'll see create thinking particles, and if I enable that, it puts thinking particles into the scene. And if I just turn off that show, fake particles, and let's just change the Arnold sky so that we can actually see them. So there's our thinking particles. Now Arnold has a nice feature called Arnold TP group. So if we just add that to our scene. Now under TP group, under the main tab, you'll see all, and underneath that, you'll see flip solver particle group. So this is the um, thinking particles for um, that flip solver. And so if I just select that, it's gonna render spheres when I uh, open up the IPR. If I just bring that up, you can see here we've got these spheres. And there you can see the fluid there. Again, I'm not going to go into making this look like water or anything like that. This is purely about how to use that data. So in here you can obviously change the radius and anything else that you may want to to make this look how you want. So that's using thinking particles. And that will work with the um, with flip, pick, and APIC. It won't work with level set because that generates a mesh. Now flip, pick, and APIC also generate an open VDB volume, and so does smoke. So we're just going to leave this flip solver selected at the moment. I'm going to delete that Arnold TP group. And what I'm going to do is change this to volume. And I'm also going to clear the cache. I'm going to leave this as internal. And when I start caching this, it's now going to produce an open VDB volume. I only need a few frames. And now if I scrub that, you'll see that's OpenVDB. Now the OpenVDB is again coming directly from the flip solver. This is a generator, and it is outputting this OpenVDB. And we can render this directly in the IPR. If I just start the IPR now, you can see that in the view there. And if I was just to delete this, and I can create an Arnold volume, standard volume, 
and I can apply that straight to the flip solver. And the default um, the default grid is actually density. So that's the default grid within this solver. Now if I was to just scrub that a bit more, let's change the color to blue and let's uh, change the density. Now you can see that being rendered there as uh, a volume using the volume uh, material from Arnold. There are no other grids in there at the moment, so the only one is, is density for these fluid type simulations. Now the next way that you can actually do this is you can write these OpenVDB files out to disk and then you can use the Arnold volume. And I'm going to show that by using a smoke solver. So I've selected the scene, I'm clicking on smoke, and I'm going to change this to external file. And I've just set a path there, uh, and so it's going to create OpenVDB volumes um, with the name smoke test underscore, followed by five numbers and VDB. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that as that is there. I'm going to allow timeline scrubbing. I'm going to close down the IPR again so that we don't have any clashes there. And for this, for smoke, I'm just going to move the sphere down so it kind of puffs up in the scene. And with the grid solver selected, I'm going to start caching. Making sure that display is set the volume. Yes, start caching. So now it's going to create a, a volumetric um, smoke. I'm just going to pause this while this is caching. So it stops simulating there. And that's the simulation here. And you can see on disk that it's just generated a bunch of um, open VDB files. And now if we want to render this, um, we can bring up the IPR and see what happens. So you can still see it in the IPR there because it is still being loaded in from this system and, and it's been output from that grid smoke solver. So that grid smoke solver there is uh, an open VDB volume. To render the open VDB volume directly inside of Arnold, we can actually use the Arnold volume. I'm just going to add that to the scene and drag that underneath the scene here. The reason I'm dragging it underneath is just to make sure it ends up in the same origin location. You can see the scene here is minus 100 for x, y, and z. So I'm just going to zero out the coordinates of this one here so that it ends up in the same location. And also on the OpenVDB tab, just make sure to set scale down to centimeters. And I'm just going to delete this grid volume solver. Actually, I'll just disable it first so we can still see the bounding box. But this won't be outputting anything into the IPR anymore. I can actually check that by firing up the IPR, and you'll see the only thing we see in the scene there is just the sphere. So let's go on all the volume, and I'm just going to load in the smoke test VDB. You see it comes in with five hashes, and that represents the numbers on disk, and so it's just going to load in all the VDB files. And uh, you can see here that it now fits the bounding box of the grid smoke solver as well. And so now I'm actually just going to delete that one. So now we're just seeing the bounty box of the Arnold volume. And I can even delete that as well. So there's nothing actually running from Jet Fluids in here anymore, uh, other than just that scene, just to make sure things are in the same location. You notice down here on the OpenVDB tab that there's a density and a temperature grid. Now the temperature grid um, is not that useful at the moment, but I will be working on that to improve it, to uh, give better data, and then you can use it with the Arnold shaders. So now I'm just going to create a shader. Arnold volume, standard volume. I'm just going to drag that onto the Arnold volume. And I'll bring up the IPR. We should now be able to see our smoke in the scene. So I'll just zoom in a bit. And now I'm just going to increase the density and change its color just so we can see it a bit more. Change the color to a blue color. So now that it's just using Arnold and loading the VDB files directly from disk to uh, render in the viewport there. Okay, well that's it from me at the moment. I mean, this was just a very uh, simple overview just to show the different aspects. So you've got 
the TP group that you can use to render the thinking particles. Uh, you can render them as meshes, and you can render them as open VDBs. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Cheers.